Welcome to the ChildNet Film Competition 2021. I'm Will Gardner, CEO of ChildNet and Director of the UK Safer Internet Centre and we're here with you to share the finale of our annual film competition which for the past two years has been hosted as an online event. We really hope that next year we can be back at the BFI, the British Film Institute on the South Bank in London and invite all of our filmmakers to come together and see their films up on the big screen. Over the last 12 years, we've received hundreds of amazing films, providing an opportunity for all young people across the UK, aged between 7 and 18, to make a short film in response to a given theme. This year, we've continued with our storyboard category, and I shall reveal the winners of that at the end. Here at ChildNet, we recognise the value of peer-to-peer -peer learning, and they, these films do just that. We ask for film entries to portray a positive message, something that can speak to and educate other young people. Of course, there are some fantastic prizes to be won too, so schools or youth organisations can continue their creative filmmaking journey. This year's theme is all about separating fact from fiction and how to find trustworthy information online. With close to 100 entries across the primary and secondary age categories, involving over 200 young people, we've managed to select the top three from each category whom we feel most reflects the theme. This was not an easy job and we enjoyed watching each and every film that was entered and we want to encourage everybody to keep going with their filmmaking. The competition has been supported this year with funding by the EU and also by the MPA, the Motion Picture Association, and by Disney and thanks to them for making this possible. We also need to thank the BBFC, the British Board of Film Classification, who've classified all the films of this year's finalists. Before we begin, let's meet this year's judging panel. I'm Jim Filipatos, Vice President for Global Public Policy at the Walt Disney Company. Hello, I'm Lisa Prime and I'm the Manager for Children and Young People at BAFTA. Hello everybody, my name's Mark and I work at the British Film Institute where I'm the Head of UK Learning Programmes. Hi, I'm Stan McCoy with the Motion Picture Association, and I'm very happy to be a part of your ChildNet judging panel. Hi there, my name's Catherine McAllister, and I'm the Head of Editorial Standards at BBC Children's and Education. Hello, my name's David Austin. I'm Chief Executive of the BBFC. It's our job to watch all the films and TV shows that you love and give them an age rating. You'll see our famous black card before films at the cinema, and our iconic symbols on platforms such as Netflix. I would encourage everyone, whether you are a finalist or not, to watch until the end, as we have six fantastic films to share with you. I can also reassure you that all the content is suitable for younger children too. Separating fact from fiction, finding trustworthy information online. The internet is an amazing tool. You can find out almost anything online and read about what is happening all over the world. But that's not always a good thing. The internet is full of crazy stories and pictures. It can be quite confusing and hard to know what is real. Take cows for example. In between all the facts there are many silly made up stories. Like the flying cow. Now we're pretty confident that cows can't fly right, but what about some of the stranger stories about UFOs, aliens building the pyramids, and the earth being flat? So how do you separate fact from fiction online? Consider the source. Is the website well known and trusted like National Geographic or BBC News Round? Do further reading. Headlines can be outrageous to get clicks. What is the whole story? Check the author. Do a quick search of the person who created the story. Are they credible? Are they real? Ask the experts, teachers, parents or search on a fact-checking website. And most importantly, trust your feelings. After all, if it sounds as silly as a flying cow, it's probably not true. to share this
You have to see this. Corona is fake. We we have to tell everyone. <laughs> I have to tell you something. What? Apparently Corona is fake. I need to tell you something. Apparently Corona is fake. Good morning and welcome to news today. Oh, and what's this? We are receiving some news from multiple sources telling us that Corona is fake. We'll be back to you shortly after we verify this information. I gotta stop this before it spreads anymore. <laughs> I'm gonna need this. Do you know if it's fact or fiction? Have a look at the URL. Is it one you recognise? If not, or it looks strange, it's probably fake. Is it a joke? Or maybe an advert? Check a website you trust, like the BBC. Does the story appear there? Look closely at any image. Here is a story set in France. But look closely at the sign. It's in English, suggesting that the image is fake. Who is the author? An award-winning journalist reporting only the facts or a social media influencer giving their opinion or the opinion of their sponsor. So there's no need to panic. Now you know how to separate fact from fiction and can learn and enjoy the internet with confidence. People shouldn't believe everything they see on the internet because anybody can post things um, without being checked and everybody has uh, their own opinion and views. One way people can check the information they see on the internet is by checking where the information comes from and by seeing if whether or not the website looks legitimate and formal. There are lots of uh, positive and negative things on the internet. Uh, the positives are that when you're trying to look up something, it'll search really fast and you'll find the information you want in a second. But the bad things is that when you typing up something on the internet could lead you to somewhere where they want to take your information away from you. The internet is a great place to get information, but we must learn to use it correctly and always remember to check our sources. Along with my fellow judges, I really enjoyed the entry called Separating Fact from Fiction from Victoria Prep School. This was a sophisticated bit of filmmaking, but had strong, clear messaging. We liked the catchy music and the strong, strong narration. We also loved the use of silly images, because who doesn't love to look on the internet for flying cows and UFOs? But it's important to realise that whilst they can make us laugh, they're not always accurate. The other really strong message was that young people need to develop the skills to trust their own judgment. And we liked that it was talking to the audience directly about that. So huge congratulations, a fantastic film, and it has achieved third place in the primary school category. Well done. Wow, Green Acres, you created a terrific film. The judges loved watching this entry. 
We thought the storytelling was terrific, the acting, the directing, everything hung together so well, and you delivered a real punch at the end with your wonderful slogan, which you also used as the title, Think Before You Click, Don't Click Before You Think. We all remember it really well. Uh, because it was so close for first place, we created a special honorable mention for this film as the judges because we wanted to acknowledge uh, the terrific effort that you put in and the great outcome. You brought together this team and you worked together showing great enthusiasm, energy, creativity, artistry, and just ended up with such uh, an impactful and wonderful story at the end. So again, congratulations, so well done, and keep doing what you're doing. Well, I'm very pleased to announce that the film Separating Fact from Fiction from Victoria College Preparatory School wins first place honors in the primary grades category. This stop motion animation film wowed the judges on every level. It was well planned, well written, well executed, and delivered a strong educational message. The judges all commented on its great sense of humor, uh, down to details like the baguette theft gag and the brick talk influencer. It's really lovely animation that showed a sophisticated understanding uh, of the problem and four clearly defined pieces of advice that were well laid out for the audience. The narrative flowed well and it included some sophisticated points such as being aware of paid sponsorships. Overall, the film met the brief extraordinarily well and we think it'll work well for the target age group. So congratulations. Thank you judges for your great feedback and for supporting the competition and of course a huge well done to our primary finalists. For the first year in the history of the competition we had two films from the same school in the finals. So now it's over to our secondary category. A message from Jack. Yeah, I'll check it out. Wait, first I'll turn on the lights. Now that's better. Let me check it out first on my computer. Ah, oh, let's type this in. Breaking. Oh, something already came up. Oh, go to UK. Two five kilograms of chocolate protects against COVID. No, this must be a joke. This seems a bit dodgy. Do you want me to tell you why? Look, firstly, there are a lot of mistakes here. Chocolate is spelled wrong. Also, London does not have a capital letter. The news story about Donald Trump does not have a full stop. There are grammatical errors. This is quite suspicious as a normal news site such as the BBC would have proofreaders to check their articles. Also, here you can say it is not secure, which suggests it is not safe. Normal trusted news sources would be secure to use. It also says you have won a phone, but do you actually think someone is going to give you a phone for free? Don't accept prizes from unknown companies and people. It could be a phishing scam. And finally, use your common sense. Do you really think Mahatma Gandhi is still alive? There is proof for his death. Finally, fake news is dangerous and you can endanger people and harm them. People may believe it and follow what it says. So please, never post fake news. Thank you. Internet is an amazing place where you can find pretty much anything, be it 
for a school project, or simply showing off your knowledge to your very real friends. Sounds cool, right? But it's not all plain sailing. Due to the fact anyone can create a website or upload information to the internet, sometimes it's a bit questionable. And while you can think of the phrase, don't trust everything you see on the internet, what if you really needed to find something? Well, there are a couple signs you can look for if you want truthful information. The first and easiest thing to check is the website or place you're getting it from. Is it a trusted site, or is it something you've never seen or heard about? If you're not sure, you can always check by looking it up or asking people if they know it. You can also read through their argument or theory, checking the information and facts they provide to prove their point. You can look at the flow of their statement, seeing if they are organised and clear, or keep changing their claims throughout. If this is a website, you can even take a look at the professionalism and setup. If it looks like it was made by someone who knew what they were doing, it most likely has been. Another quick one to check is the date. Considering information changes over time, a source could be outdated. This is a crucial part of testing the reliability, as a source could have all the previously mentioned factors and yet still be false because it was from the past. And after all that, just remember, if you're still confused, I'm on the internet. I could be a cyborg. How would you know? Thanks for watching and bye bye. Agents, here are your targets. You can look at like, other websites or ask other people and see if their answers match each other. Firstly, I check the source. Is it coming from a reliable source? For example, is it from a credible government website or from someone's Instagram story? Then I check all the information presented, statistics, names, dates, etc. Then I look to see if there are any other similar news articles out there or if this is a one-off. If this is a one-off, then it usually decreases its credibility. In most news content that is fake is believable, as many people think the news is correct and reliable. Some people may think, why would anyone spread fake news? Also, there are many misleading videos on video sharing sites like YouTube. The false content that I believe is the most believable are the ones that play on emotions. You see it in posts, speeches, articles. I think the internet is a fabulous place to gain information and there are also many reliable and well-known sources on there. It's more efficient than looking for a book to gain information. I'd say they should fact check more carefully um, and they should have a greater use 
of like quality assurance marks so you know where you're getting the information from. The internet industry should be an unbiased place. Opinions shouldn't be forced onto others. Rather, they should be expressed, but people should be left to make their own opinions. Yes, I think it's a fantastic place, as long as you check your information and check your sources carefully. I particularly like How to Trust Your Sources by Ranley School. Especially, I especially like the homemade aesthetic um, of the animation. I loved how it used everyday materials and quick draw imagery. It made it, I think, very appealing to a younger audience and it gave it lots of pace and energy. It was funny. Uh, it was a light-hearted treatment of what's a very serious, it can be a very serious topic and I think that's really important. Um, we placed it third in a very competitive group of entries. Um, so th that's a fantastic achievement. Well done, Randy School. It's my great pleasure to announce the second place film in the secondary category. The judges particularly liked this film for its simple and heartfelt approach. And we thought it did a really great job at communicating those key messages, particularly the importance of using critical thinking to help judge whether a website is reliable or not. So the second place is awarded to Tuxford Academy. Massive congratulations. We all really loved your film. We thought you did an excellent job, so you should be really proud of yourselves. From the very first shot of this film, I was hooked with its spy theme and dramatic music, with real flair and skill and humour. It took aim at a host of people who mislead us online, from preening celebrity influencers to scammers. All the judges love the joke about antis, and I really love the slogan, don't just endorse, check the source. So, the winner of the secondary competition is Bolton School Girls Division with their film, Mission Fake News. As promised, I can reveal the winner of this year's storyboard category. We had over 30 storyboards entered this year, so we asked animator Jamie and Middleton from the Animation Guys to choose the winner for us. I'm delighted to announce that the winner of the storyboard category is Elizabeth from King's Court School. Jamie and chose this for its clear messaging and thought the design of staging was easy to understand. He also thought the variety of shots made it an interesting idea for animation. Well done, Elizabeth. Huge congratulations to all the finalists in the ChildNet film competition. Loved watching every single entry. Well done. Many congratulations to all the finalists this year. There were some really inspiring and creative entries. A huge congratulations to each of the finalists. Each of the teams and individuals did a terrific job telling an engaging story in support of this year's theme of separating fact from fiction. But everyone who entered the competition this year should really feel hugely proud of themselves. I think it's a great achievement to have made your own film. On behalf of the Motion Picture Association, we want to offer a big congratulations to all of the finalists. Your films were just great. So that brings us to the end of this year's Childnet Film Competition. I hope you've enjoyed watching the finalists. And remember, please enter again next year.